This image just dropped, and it matters because it's raw, a direct capture of 3i Atlas, shared publicly exactly as recorded, no cosmetic cleanup, no heavy processing, no artificial enhancement, a 12-inch Dobsonian, an EQ platform, a consumer-grade IMX410 camera, and yet a directed feature is already visible, not teased out later, not invented in software, it's present in the raw frame itself. That's why this image matters. This is the raw color frame, no contour overlays, no contrast stretching, no directional arrows. What you're seeing is the light distribution exactly as the sensor recorded it. The central region stays compact, brightness falls off smoothly in every direction except one. There's a subtle asymmetry here, a slight bias in intensity, not sharp, not exaggerated, but real. And this is before anyone tries to find a feature. That's the key point. Even at this stage, the structure isn't perfectly symmetric. Now, the same data is viewed through color separation. Nothing added. No sharpening. Just the channels weighted differently so contrast can emerge. And this is where the structure stops being ambiguous. The core remains compact, but one side darkens and stretches outward. Not randomly. Not symmetrically. That darker wedge isn't noise. Noise scatters. This stays coherent. It points in a single direction. When different color channels agree on the same geometry, you're no longer looking at a processing trick. You're looking at directionality. This is the same frame again, but inverted and pushed to reveal what normally hides in the background. No smoothing. No cosmetic cleanup. And now the geometry locks in. The core stays tight, but the extension doesn't dissolve into grain. It sharpens. Noise breaks apart when inverted. Real structure survives. This survives. You can trace a single direction from the core outward, even as the surrounding field turns chaotic. That's the key detail. Not brightness. Not color. Direction. Across raw, color-separated, and inverted views, the same feature keeps reappearing. That's not processing. That's behavior. This next frame is different. This isn't a single exposure. It's a stacked analysis built from 61 one-minute frames captured on December 15, 2025 from Tony Scarato's observatory in southern Italy. Same object, much deeper look. The same data is split into red, green, and blue channels and processed independently. That matters because noise behaves differently in each channel. Real structure doesn't. The top left is the reference image, with the object tracked against background stars and orientation marked to establish motion and direction. Everything else builds from that. Now look at the red channel. This is where the Larsen second rotational filter is applied, a technique designed to reveal rotational and radial asymmetries. What emerges isn't a diffuse glow, it's a directed extension coming cleanly from the core. The circled region marks the nucleus position. The structure extends away from it coherently. Switch to the green channel. Different wavelength band. Different noise profile. Yet the same feature reappears. Same origin point. Same direction. The intensity changes as expected, but the geometry stays locked. That's critical. Now the blue channel. This is usually where structure falls apart first. Shorter wavelengths amplify noise, but even here, the extension doesn't vanish. It weakens, but it doesn't rotate, scatter, or randomize. Three channels, different wavelengths, different processing paths, same direction. And here's the scale that matters. At this distance, one pixel corresponds to roughly 3,850 kilometers. This isn't a tiny artifact. This is a large-scale feature extending tens of thousands of kilometers from the core. When a structure survives stacking, survives channel separation, and survives aggressive filtering, it stops being a processing curiosity. It becomes behavior. This next image pushes the timeline much further. What you're seeing here comes from a three-hour time series run, 180 minutes of continuous tracking, not a single snapshot. Same object, much longer baseline. And the key detail isn't brightness, it's consistency. Across 180 separate one-minute exposures, 3i Atlas keeps the same compact core and the same asymmetric envelope.
If this were random cloud interference, tracking error, or transient noise, the shape would smear out over that timescale. It doesn't. Look at the background stars. They're slightly trailed, which tells you the telescope is locked on to the object itself, not the star field. That means every internal feature you're seeing is intrinsic to 3i Atlas, not a motion artifact. Ira notes something critical in the caption. The frame-to-frame -frame brightness fluctuations come from passing clouds, not activity spikes. In other words, the noise changes, but the geometry does not. That's a quiet but powerful constraint. At this point in its trajectory, the object is moving at roughly 130,000 miles per hour relative to Earth. Over three hours, that's a significant change in position. Yet, the internal structure holds together. No fragmentation, no rotational blur, no chaotic spreading. Longer baselines are where false features usually die. This one survives. So now we have short amateur exposures, multi-channel filtered stacks, and a three-hour continuous time series all pointing to the same conclusion. The structure around 3i Atlas is persistent, not momentary. Let's slow this down and look at what the mid-December data is actually telling us. Across observations taken between December 15th and 18th, the same feature keeps appearing not after heavy enhancement, not after aggressive processing, right there in the raw frames, a directional jet emerging straight from the central region. What matters isn't just that the jet exists, it's that it appears before any cosmetic processing is applied. That alone rules out filters, contrast stretching, or post-processing artifacts. Now look at the core itself across different exposure lengths, different cameras, and different nights. The central region stays compact. No smearing, no breakup, no diffusion you'd expect if this object were unstable or fragmenting. The geometry holds. Even more telling, the orientation of the jet doesn't wander. Multiple observers, different instruments, same direction. That's not coincidence. That's structure. When the data is split into red, green, and blue channels, the feature doesn't disappear. It persists across wavelengths, which tells us this isn't a single-band noise effect or a sensor glitch. In long time series sequences, stretching out over hours, there's no collapse, no chaotic spreading, just steady behavior. And critically, the background stars trail while the object stays sharp. That confirms object-locked tracking. This structure exists in the sky, not in the software. When you put all of this together, time, wavelength, independent observers, the result is the same. The structure persists. And that's the part that deserves attention. So here's the real question to sit with. If this jet is visible before heavy processing, holds its shape across time, and stays aligned across multiple observers and wavelengths, what exactly is driving it? Is this just an unusually active nucleus operating at the extreme edge of comet physics? Or are we watching a process we don't fully understand yet? Let me know what you think in the comments. I read all of them. And if you want to keep tracking 3i Atlas as new data drops, hit like, subscribe, and share this with someone following.